people ask, have asked me in the past, and I know that um, a lot of people ask this, what, you know, you seem to be going on more and more trips, and they seem to be paid for, and you're starting to be able to live the dream, quote unquote, and travel the world and do what you love. What is your secret to being able to get these trips paid for? So you want the secret? Okay. It's, okay, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, the secret to be able to do all this is, is to be able to register and to tell a story about what you're doing. It's to be able to show the versatility of a product, to show the characteristics of a product, to, to represent the brand, to behave yourself in a fun way but professional matter. And, and so that, this is a totally different skill set that you're talking about. I mean, you're talking about, it seems like you're, you're, you're talking about the storyteller as a photographer journalist. So l tell us a little bit about you as a photographer and how you got to get your photography skills up to, up to par. So I went to school. I took uh, some classes in college and university regarding photographer. Uh, photography and video editing. Um, I also, there's a lot of this stuff that you have to be able to to teach yourself. You know, there's, now with the internet, there's a bunch of information out there just waiting for you to learn. You know, you don't have to pay for it. You just have to put on time and learn about it. Uh, the same as uh, with storytelling and videography. So I always loved cameras, I always loved photography, I always loved videography, and I was a camera guy for a couple of years of my life. So I'm able to merge all this knowledge that I have and more than just going over there and be the base jumper who just turns their camera on before the jump, I'm the director, I'm the storyteller, I'm the journalist who's recording and documenting the entire experience. Because what we do, in our base jump, it's only uh, one percent of the entire you know, of the entire journey. So, what I do is I, I'm I'm capturing all that, and companies are starting to pick on that. So you're becoming a documenter. You're 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 telling a story of the whole process. <coughs> ah, sorry. <coughs> Son, excuse me. In my face, yeah, there we go. That will help me sneeze. So it seems to me they're becoming you're using your photography skills above and beyond a cameraman. Now, what a lot of people ask me is, I want to be a, a skydiving cameraman, and what I'm finding out is to be a real skydiving cameraman, you have to be a photographer first, or you have to be a skydiver who becomes a photographer, either or, but you got to be a photographer in the mindset of a photographer is different than somebody just putting a camera on their head and taking it for a ride. It's, it's, Where it's, do you make this transition? You know, what do you tell people who wanna like, who wanna go do this kind of stuff? What do you have to, what skills do you have to hone as a photographer in relation to the storytelling that you tell us? The big secret is telling the story. What do you have to do to be able to, to get yourself to that level? It's mind blowing to go to drop zones and to talk with camera guys and ask them about their still camera, like how they set it up and stuff like that. And whenever I get an answer like, oh, I just put it in sport mode because I'm doing sports and stuff like that, you're like, nah! Because they're, they're, you can train a chimpanzee to follow a freaking zebra and to press a button every time that he sees something, you know? But it actually, it takes the, the, all these big guys that you see, uh, Norman King, uh, Craig O'Brien, uh, Tom, all those guys, they're photographers who understand the principles of photography, who understand about chatter speed, who, are, who understand about aperture, who understand about framing, composition, all these different stuff. So, uh, if you want to be just a it's still a, cam uh, a camera guy on a drop zone and do tandems that you can get away with just putting an automatic and just jumping behind a tandem that's 
that's all you need to It would do. be a way to build your skills, your flying skills, right? Yeah, but if you want to take it to the next level, if you want to be a professional, if you want to shoot for a product, if you want to shoot professionally for a company, if you want to be a storyteller, you have to know about photography and you have to invest your time to acquire the knowledge. All right, so let's talk about your secret storytelling. Tell me a little bit about one of your last jobs and how you, what you, if you were to go out, what, what is storytelling to you? Storytelling is, is pretty much everything that is behind what normally is shown in our sport. Let's take base jumping. A lot of the videos that you go out there and you see about base jumping is jump, 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 jump. And that's so shallow and so a small fraction of, of the entire experience. I mean, the spectrum of what we do is way bigger, you know? Like when you wake up in the morning and you're in this beautiful place and you're in a tent and the sun is coming and it's lighting up the wall and stuff like that, that's beautiful, you know? And that's, that's what, what engages the regular audience who can relate to the beauty of the sport. That's what engaged the sponsors who you were sleeping on their tent or who you're using their products. That's where they go like, okay, well, now the regular people can engage with this story because that's how, how, how you're telling it. Also, a lot of the stuff that people just walk by, like whenever you're climbing up a beautiful hill and there's a beautiful flower, a beautiful tree or something like that, like that's an opportunity for you to explore that other aspect and <clears throat> to tell the story from beginning to end, from the moment you get into the car to the moment you get to the place, to the climbing, to the jump, to, to the packing, to living, you know, it's the entire journey that makes our sport beautiful. And it's a way, in a way to relate it to the audience. That's what these companies are looking for. Now on the regular skydiver, what I, how I learned, I guess, original storytelling, which later I put into weddings and stuff, was as a tandem flyer because you know in Lodi you have little time and we would literally Dennis McGlynn taught me how to edit on the fly and that was we turn it on and turn it off and I had to visually think of the story I was going to tell which was a tandem and we did the same thing over and over again but to us we were making little mini movies that told the story of a person coming to a drop zone and making their first skydive yeah. you know I, I think what you're saying is the flip side of that is the more that you get to know your equipment and the, 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 the more adept you get at background, composing, lighting, and the actual physical structure of the camera, and the more skill sets you can build, the more you can do with that. But you still have to open your mind up to doing more other than just turning it on and turning it off. Exactly. Um, there, there is, um, there is the principles of the storytelling, um, there's, they're really old. Like if you trace, if you trace back to the, to the Greeks, you know, you, if you search, they are, uh, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, I mean, it's uh, the Aristotelic, Aristotelic, Aristoteles, okay. He That's good enough, yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> he created a narrative method that, that tells the beginning, the climax, the end, and stuff like that, and if you follow the, that kind of uh, pattern, you can adapt what you know to any movie you're making. You know, it could be a wedding, it could be a tandem video, it could be a base jumping video, it could be the story of your uh, son in his first uh, baseball game, you know? Because you know all the parts that you need and you're just narrating the story. And if you add that, what you just said, like the knowledge of your equipment, you know how far you can push your equipment, you know? You know that if you, if you get uh, close to the baseball field, to the baseball net with a... 2.8 aperture and you really uh, play good with the focus you know that you're going to be able to get some shallow stuff with your son in the background and then just focus into him and you're going to get a beautiful shot so you implement your knowledge to that uh, storytelling that you already know and you get something really beautiful that other people can get you know I think one of the big barriers to people getting into skydiving and photography is they've got to put so much money and time and effort into learning how to skydive and now they want to be a photographer too and it's like two separate big things to learn if you were to give some advice to someone who was starting out who wanted to be a skydiving cameraman 
Um, what advice could you give them in general? And then what equipment would you suggest to start out with and move up to? Um, this is what I did. And this is, I think, one of the best advice I can give to people is the following. When you're going to get, uh, you're going to start with uh, tandem videography. Well, first of all, you have to have some really decent flying skills. First of all, that you are jumping into <laughs> into a pond full of sharks, people that they don't want you there, they want you gone. Because let's face it, I mean, breaking into a drop zone is always really tough for anyone. Um, what I would suggest is having a strong knowledge of photography beforehand, because. What, whatever you lack in flying skills, you can make up in technical skills, you know? All those shots that these badass tandem gods can get because they're too busy or uh, they're burned out of their job, you go over there and you make it, you know? You, you come up with a beautiful composition, a beautiful video, a nice story, nice music, and you exceed in the part that they don't, you know? So my best, uh, my best advice will be to have a strong um, technical storytelling and equipment knowledge. Start beforehand. using your cameras on the ground to document stuff on the ground for the drop zone, marketing, stuff like that. That's what I tell people to do. Just mm -hmm. start shooting your friends, start shooting everything. Just, just shoot, you know? I have, uh, I have a lot of gigabytes of photos that I, I shot, you know? What kind of equipment would you suggest for a newbie? I mean, helmet, cameras, just starting out. Okay, just starting up, uh, I'll suggest uh, Tom Fly. Not only because they're my sponsor, but because I truly believe that it's a helmet that you make is 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 a it's not as it's not the most expensive helmet out there, but it's a helmet that is gonna last you forever. You know. The durability and, and everything about the helmet, how comfortable it is, and also you're gonna be able to put. Your, it's gonna sustain your camera equipment. Um, the only thing I would suggest is a uh, camera, uh, DSLR camera. Um, there's, I'm a Canon guy, but there's nothing wrong with uh, with Nikon or any of the other cameras. What kind of Canon body? Um, any kind of body. That I always tell them to get like the TI, Rebel TI. It's lightweight. Uh, the TI is a lightweight. You can even start with a with a 20D, a, an old 10D. Like seriously, the only thing you 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 need is to be able to use your camera in manual and to learn what does the shutter speed does, what does the aperture does, and how to use your lens. That's that's and um, what is the ISO and all the the barrels part of, uh, of photography so it can be any camera as long as it's a uh, DSLR and you're able to um, play with the manual settings and all that stuff because that's how you're gonna learn that's how you're gonna what's learn. what's your favorite uh, things on photography that you concentrate on out of the sky out of the sky uh, I love scenery and I love like uh, HDR I I really like it um, I also love shooting um, portraits. I, I really like portraits. But uh, I want to start working more in the creative uh, part with my friend, Harry Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Create yeah, the off-lighting stuff, I really enjoy it. starting to get into strobes and stuff like that. And that's, that's, uh, that's it's getting it's, fun. Strobes and lighting, that's an entirely different dimension you know so let's see so your secret is one of your big secrets of success is storytelling utilizing your camera and your flying skills to be able to document an adventure and finally give a product to somebody who wants it yeah it's that simple and you can do the same thing on your drop zone get to know your camera on the ground get to know it in the air shoot stuff and give it away in the beginning get stuff printed hang stuff up Give stuff, work with the DZ for marketing, stuff like that. But the bottom line is you got to outdo those other guys to be able to get the slot. Yeah, and also when 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 you're more comfortable around the drop zone and around the base scene and stuff like that, you're able to start uh, anticipating shots because you know what's going to happen, you know. You know that that tandem customer, as soon as he's going to put his um, 
harness on, you know that he's gonna go outside and cheer up with your friends. So you go out there and you wait for that shot because you know it's gonna happen. So it's just knowing the story and knowing your equipment is pretty much. All right, Jonathan Flores on storytelling, my secret to fame and success. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you.